Hello, it's uh, Adil bringing you a review of the uh, German DAX. Okay, uh, trying to give you an intermarket analysis perspective. Hopefully, the, over the European markets and see exactly where we're heading this week. Okay, so uh, fundamentals. Uh, let's have a, a discussion with regards to fundamentals. Uh, German data recently has been very, very weak. Okay, Germany has been supporting the European Union and keeping the eurozone afloat. Obviously, that's uh, no longer the case. Um, obviously, we added adding sanctions and, and Russia now. That's obviously going to impact even further. China obviously uh, slowing down and maintaining a 7.5% growth target. It's not exactly growth. It's just uh, stagnation. So that obviously is not going to help Germany or German exports uh, or the export machine either. Okay. Uh, the Eurozone, as we all know, um, is, uh, is a sick man. Okay, the periphery is in a bad state. French economy is not good. Uh, Italy, etc., Spain, etc., they're just about uh, maintaining equilibrium in terms of GDP. Uh, and nothing fantastic there. And obviously, the euro is not helping either. Okay, now, given the fact that we've got weak data coming out of Germany, which has been consistent over the last week or so, uh, then that means that we are uh, into a, 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 um, a risk off type mentality. So therefore, uh, German growth is not sustaining Europe. Therefore, what will sustain Europe? Okay, uh, adding the fact that the the uh, the euro itself is being stubborn around the 1.35, 1.36 QE certainly isn't coming, given the fact that even though the Germans are sending out mixed signals, Draghi is sending out mixed signals, uh, pol European policymakers are sending out mixed signals, and obviously they've just experimented with low, with their negative deposit rates. So. They want to see what the effect of that will be before they obviously uh, uh, make the next move. Now, so we have weak economic data that obviously is keeping the, the German DAX at bay. Then we have geopolitics. Okay, geopolitics, given the fact that one third exports go towards Russia, German exports, obviously that doesn't bode well either. So geopolitics rule the roost, okay, uh, and uh, that will obviously dictate German market or German economy or the German DAX down. So you've got the likes of uh, Ukraine, Russia, as I've already discussed, Palestine, Iraq, Palestine and Iraq, uh, both of those factors that are at play. And obviously our oil price is going higher as well. OK, so that obviously is not is not helping uh, the German export machine. So let's have a look at the uh, technical picture. Now, now that we know that the uh, fundamentals are definitely bearish. OK, now we have uh, the weekly chart is a bearish engulfing candle. So that itself is bearish in and of itself obviously after last week's bearish engulfing candle to this week obviously has been inside bar consolidation this key trend line now is at the threat of being broken okay so we have a classical example over here now on a weekly chart of a classical bear flag pattern okay this is basically what we have a classical bear flag scenario okay so this is what i expect to play out on the german dax a bear flag and down we go okay now let's have a look at the daily chart. Daily chart, obviously, we are into uh, a bearish formation because we've broken this key trend line support. Okay, so we have lower lows and lower highs. Okay, the, the last high, uh, the last lower high was obviously putting at 61%. We've closed this gap below. The next move I expect is to continue move lower. Okay, looking at the 9500 level and the 200 MA opening up. Okay, on the daily chart, that's basically what I foresee and uh, over the next uh, week or two especially given the fact that we've broken these key previous resistance uh, equal support regions the next support obviously is going to be around this lower level here okay uh, we've got this level here and we've got this level here so all we basically need is weaker economic data out of germany and down we go okay now let's have a look at obviously adding the fact that portugal concerns are not helping the uh, the financial markets either uh, let's have a look at the 60 minute chart okay 60 minute chart we've closed the gap below so that basically is a situation that we've seen here so obviously that gap is closed we're putting a bottoming tail and that gap's closed now we do have an unfilled gap above at around the 9750 level so that will certainly be a probability of being closed once that gets closed obviously the downside continues and further down we go so basically this is more uh, of a bear flag formation so it goes down comes up bear flag and then obviously down we go again Okay, and then obviously we make these lows. Uh, 9,600, 9,500, obviously, like I said, is open. 10 minute chart. Okay, we again, like I said, we seem to be basing here. Uh, I didn't expect this base to hold given the fact that uh, we've got the situation in uh, Palestine and uh, Israel, and obviously the ongoing. Uh, uh, obviously
obviously conflict in Ukraine and Russia and who basically debate about who basically downed the airplane etc etc but uh, from my perspective uh, okay if we are going to short squeeze we need to close this gap above which I've already explained is around the 9750 level uh, we have already short squeezed higher so 9750 was certainly out of resistance given the fact that the polit political standoff and we've had almost 100 Palestinians butchered over the weekend uh, then this will certainly uh, escalate the situation of geopolitics and attention and down we go okay so 9750 holes obviously 200 ma above the 9770 level i'll certainly be looking to short the german dax once we close the gap it's all over all, it's always been about that gap why because we had the uh, the uh, us markets uh, short squeeze and light volume on yellen's algos going into the weekend which is generally typical but given the fact that volume was supposed to be increased due to geopolitical tensions obviously that's not been the case okay so uh, I still remain bearish even though I did get stopped out of my Nasdaq and DAX Nasdaq and FTSE positions on Friday uh, I am still st I'm starting off with minus 60 points for the week and I will maintain my bearish position and I will certainly go short okay regardless of where the market opens looking for further downside okay so uh, you do have this potential pattern of an inverted head and shoulders formation here which um, I don't know that's just Let's take it with a pinch of salt for now, given the fact that geopolitics rule the roost and they will dominate proceedings. Okay, so uh, your level horizontal resistance 9720 and 9750 gap fill 200 MA 9770. Obviously, horizontal resistance at 9780. Previous resistance equals support at 9715. But realistically, down we go. Okay, 60 minute chart, down we go. Daily chart, down we go. Lower lows, lower highs. Uh, bearish channel, down we go. Okay, folks. So uh, I expect the euro to certainly catch a bid come Monday because the euro is actually obviously acting like a safe haven. The concerns in uh, Portugal and Ukraine obviously have caused uh, the European Union to come under pressure and obviously given the fact that you have tapering concerns in the U US. Also given the fact that geopolitics is obviously causing uh, risk aversion, that's why you've had the euro USD fall because the US dollar is catching a bid. Uh, obviously the Japanese yen should catch a bid and obviously the Swiss franc should catch a bid so they'll they'll certainly be uh, uh, Euro JPY may well be a currency to short come Monday okay that may well be an interesting currency but overall indices I'm looking for further downside and obviously I've explained my bearish stance from a fundamental and technical perspective so risk on risk off wax on